Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, this is a follow up to the heated discussion I had with Christian friends. And he brought up this verse here. Okay, there's no need to show you in Arabic, but I'm showing him the Arabic just so he can see that I am taking from the, the chapter he was talking about. So it says, Fight those. You see, fight them, he did not say, go and kill them. There's a big difference between fight and kill, fight and invite, uh, and invade. So fight them means only that they are fighting you. And once they start fighting you, then you have to go all the way. But anyway, but who do, they, do we fight? We fight those who do not believe in God and the last day. Of course, the last day is the day of judgment. Okay? And they do not consider unlawful what is unlawful. Uh, eating pork, drinking, um, whatever is forbidden. Yeah, and unlawful have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of the truth from those who are given the scripture. Of course, uh, some people who did get a scripture, but they did not follow the truth. Anyway, fight them until they give the jizya. This is the jizya here. That your man would want you to know about is an amount of money that a non-Muslim pays a non-Muslim of course who lives in an Islamic state uh, take an example Lebanon or um, say um, Egypt because the majority is Muslim and the Muslims they pay something called zakat it is almsgiving it is 2.5 of all their wealth they pay it the, what is the difference one might ask what is the difference between jizya and zakat now the jizya is a fixed amount that a non-muslim will pay yearly okay it the maximum the maximum would be like ten dollars a year that that is the max Whereas the zakat, which is the almsgiving, is 2.5 of the whole wealth, okay? Please notice the difference. Whatever you own, if it is a billion, you have to give 2.5. Do you understand the difference here? A Muslim pays more money to the state than a non-Muslim in a, in, a, in, a, in a Muslim state, okay? That's one thing. The jizya here, this jizya here, only paid, or the jizya is only paid by working men, non-Muslim. So a, Musl a, a non-Muslim woman or children or elderly or jobless do not have to pay it. Okay. Whereas zakat for a Muslim, it has to be paid for every. Uh, uh, from everyone like if a woman has money she has to pay the zakat for it whereas a non-muslim living in a muslim country woman I'm talking about does not have to pay the jizya at all it's only her husband or her the father whom is working so the, the jizya is really really small amount of money to be paid to the state in order to do whatever because the zakat of people is like a tax that she, it is paid to the state in order to maintain I don't know public services roads l uh, public lights stuff like that so it's only normal that uh, a non-muslim pays a little bit of money exactly like the other so it would be fair and it's not even fair if you look into it as I said every person has to pay zakat if he has money in Islam, whereas a non-Muslim in a Muslim country will only pay the 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 one person who is working pays. Women and children and elderly do not have to pay. Okay, now he brought this chapter and he was showing you. Oh, look at this and that and let me show you. Let me show you this chapter from the beginning. Because you know, a deceiver like Christian Prince always say lots of stuff, okay? So, 
let's just take it from the beginning. I want to um, show you a few things. Okay, where am I here? Now, it, this is verse 1. It says, this is a declaration of disassoci disassociation from Allah and His Messenger to those with whom you had made a treaty. See, the, the disassociation here is not with some friendly people, your neighbors, who are good to you and you're good to them and life is rosy and all is good and happy. No! This is to people whom, with whom you had a treaty and they did not uphold it. Okay? Alright? So some of them are actually, they, they had, the, the polytheistics had a treaty with, with the Muslims. Yes, they did not uphold it. Okay? So, um, so he's mentioning the people that are being associated uh, from this believers and his messenger. So if you repent, that is best for you. But if you turn away, then of course, yeah, he's telling them, if you guys repent from what you're doing, fine. Otherwise, what do you want? Hmm? Hmm? You turn away, then know that you would not cause failure to Allah. Allah is greater than any, any of his creation. He does not need people, but it is for their own good. And of course they will have a, pun, uh, a painful punishment. But these are who? These are the disbelievers. Okay? It's not the good people. Yeah? But then it comes, it's not only for anyone, but it is... I don't know, it's getting a little bit slow, but I'll, I'll, I'll go. Except our... Okay? You see, in this disassociation, there are some people who are expect oh accepted. It's an exam. It's an exception. It's an exemption. Those who you made a treaty among the polytheistic, and they have not been efficient towards you in anything or supported anyone against you. So complete for them their treaty until their term. Okay. Until the, the treaty has, it says, do not break the treaty. Okay. Of course, indeed, Allah loves the righteous. Of course, Allah loves the righteous. Those who do not break the, the, the treaty. And then when they break the treaty, what happens? Of course, they, the war starts. They kill the polytheistic wherever you find them, besiege them, wait for them at every place and ambush. But here is the, the exception, of course. There is always an exception. It's not like you just go and fight and kill everyone. No, of course not. It's those whom actually, with whom you have a treaty and they break it. So if they should repent, establish prayer and give zakat, the, the alms giving we're talking about, let them go on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiven and merciful. Allah will for, forgive them, of course. This is the, 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 the problem with the with Christian prince comes up and shows you things and he would never show you the, the context. This is chapter 9 of course he shows you, he goes straight to verse where it says that those whom, uh, uh, the people of the book, you have to look off at the context. So here look, verse, we were looking at verse 5, now we're looking at verse 6. And if any one of the polytheists seeks your protection, then grant him protection. Uh, I, I don't understand why Christian Prince does not show you these things. Uh, I wonder why. Anyway, so that he may hear the words of Allah, then deliver him to his place of safety. That is because they are a people who do not know. You see, folks, the Christian deceiver prince would never show you such a thing. He would never show you a verse like this. And this is actually what Islam is about. This is what is being taught to us. Whereas I know there's always 
the the, 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 the the black goat or the black sheep amongst the herd. I know there are some Muslim who are doing some wrong, and there you there you will find good and bad in every faith, in every whatever ism, any ism you look into, they're good and bad. So I don't know why Christian Prince does not show you stuff like this. Hmm? He wouldn't. He would never show you verses verses that go against his agenda. He has got an agenda of show people oh they are the enemy they want to kill us they want to kill you he is a fear monger a hate monger all he wants is to see people hating each other and he feeds from that and I am sure he is uh, greatly paid for that I don't know who is supporting him but anyway but if you if they repent meaning the the, 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 the polytheist established prayers and gives a car then they are your brothers in religion and we detail the verses for people who know okay so I don't know why that man is like that but he's definitely not a Christian so now I am taking you back to the verse he showed because what he 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 makes a great deal out of is this word here until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled it's not only him but many many others actually make a big story out of this as if it was uh, the, the the islamic state is forcing them to do something they don't want or uh, forcing them to accept islam we're not forcing you the state is not forcing non-muslims to become muslims it is willingly to pay the jizya of course after they understand that we pay the zakat the arms given the 2.5 out of our wealth and they pay that jizya while they are humbled humbled to who I just don't understand they are humbled of course to the to the state because they pay to the state they do not pay uh, Ali or Muhammad or uh, Mustafa or uh, Omar or no they pay the state they meaning they are hum they they humble they accept the the the, the ruling of the state we're not taking money from them personally. We're not robbing them. We don't go into their wallets or we go to into their bank account and just steal the money. No, they they know that it is like a tax that they pay to the state. Meaning, because the Arabic word sagar here just means obediently. Yeah, not rebelling against the state and and not paying their share of. Uh, of the, of tax to the state I know that it when it says like when it translates to they are humbled to stuff like that they're meaning humbled to the law of the land they are paying this amount of jizya to the state make no mistake and do not let people like Christian Prince deceive you this is to the state I don't know how to put it better than this way but this is how we understand it and it is a fixed amount and it cannot like when when you say ten dollars ten dollars that's even way more than that it at the time it was like 15 50 dirhams 50 dirhams which is what the equivalent of one dollar if you if you put it in the in in the into perspective so I hope you guys understand a bit of this and uh, see the deception that the Christian deceiver prince brings over and tells people that it's like a Muslims are after the Christians, the people of the scripture. The people of the scripture are protected in Islam. Alright, here is just uh, something that I wanted you to see. So if you um, if you google let's see if you google this bit just say protection of the ahl of the ahl dhimma the people of the books they're called ahl dhimma in in arabic so here is what you find like you take the the people of the books 
IPFS. So it talks in details on the people of the books, um, like the previous um, um, the previous scriptures and nations. So the the Vimmi meaning the the one. This is the singular of Ahl uh, or Ahl are is plural and Dhimmi is one person. Okay, is the main article. So historically, a Dhimmi. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Two seconds there. Hmm. So you can read now. Historically, a Dhimmi was a person who is protected. Note this word, please. And don't let Christian Prince um, tell you a few things that are not under Islamic law by a pact contracted between non-Muslims and authorities from their Muslim government. This status was first made available to non-Muslims who were people of the book Jesus Jesus Christ, but was later extended to include Sikhan and the others. People of the book living in non-Muslim nation were not con considered the means. Okay. Just this is just so you, so you would know what is happening in there. Um, the Sora we've done with. I want you to go to Google, please, and just write non-Muslims protection in Islamic State. And you go down here, non-Muslims in Muslim societies. So click on it. And you will get this. Now this is a man, the, the man who is going to be talking here is one of the biggest contemporary scholars, Islamic scholars, his name is Qaradawi. So um, I will get down to it, I, I'm not going to be reading this, you can read yourself, you can you can pause and read or you can, um, you can google it and read for yourself. And by the way, it's very, very, very late in here where I am now, and I cannot, uh, cannot go louder than this because I don't want to be disturbing my neighbors. It's against Islamic teachings to disturb my neighbors, and of course, it is um, a teaching of Jesus, peace be upon him, saying, "Honor your neighbor." And that's one part of honoring your neighbor, not disturb them. Anyway, so in Islam, the primary right of the people of the book is to be protected and safeguarded against any foreign aggression. Okay? All Muslims are compelled to protect them in the event. Oh, by the way, what I forgot to um, tell you earlier on about the jizya. You know that a non-Muslim pays a jizya and he doesn't have to serve in the military service and he doesn't have to go and fight if there is a war. Okay? So let's read. Let me read a bit of here. I just this is for me and for you guys. So them in event such um, transgression falls against them. Al Qaradawi bases his standpoint about this on jurisprudential texts and the position of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. May Allah be pleased and have mercy on him. While speaking to Qultu uh, Shah. Tartar regarded, you know, the Tartars when the the, um, the the Mongols when they invaded the the West, which is the the Islamic land at the time, they took some prisoners. Um, f of course, they were Muslims and non-Muslims. And then when the Muslims went to recover the the prisoners, the Tartars said, "Okay, we'll give you the Muslims, but the non-Muslims, we're gonna keep them." The Muslims says, "No way, we're taking them because they are." our people, they are our uh, neighbors in our country, so they are from our land, so we're taking them back. You know, however, the, the, the latter is, okay, let's go back to Tartar regarding the freeing of prisoners of war. So the, this, this man, Kultusha, agreed to set Muslims post free upon Ibn Taymiyyah's request. So Ibn Taymiyyah, this is the man whom are they like people like Christian Prince will picture him as a terrorist. So he said, the latter instance, the Christians will be released with the Muslims, which was what happened in the end. This stand by Ibn Taymiyyah reflects the perspective of jurisprudence on the subject of the right to external protection.
protect protection so not only they're not only protected within the country but they're protect protected even out of the country okay the Muslim state must also defend minorities against internal injustice or oppression I know what some people like Christian Prince will say so oh, why are Christians in your countries and he earlier on in his video live he said well there are more than Muslims there are no Christians in the Middle East there are over 16 million Christians in the Middle East yeah there are over 10 million in in Egypt around 6 million in Lebanon and Syria of course Syria now they, they, they the war left nothing but but you have to understand that throughout if we as Muslims if the, if Islam itself was teaching or saying or the Quran was teaching to kill you know, the people of the book there wouldn't be a single Christian in any of the Islamic countries and you will find Christian everywhere in Muslim countries he is talking about um, uh, about uh, the Arabic Peninsula the Arabic Peninsula is an exception okay it's exactly like Mecca and Medina. Christians, they don't, they don't go, they don't live there. They, they do some of them. They work, but they do not live there. There will be no Christianity in there. It's just like the Vatican. Like you can't have a, uh, you can have a Muslim community in the Vatican. But anyway, I, I don't want to go um, be sidetracked. So such that they cannot be subjected to any form of wrongdoing by the state or its sponsors and overlapping evidence by the Quran and the Sunnah so the Prophet the Prophet has been reported to say he who unfairly treats a non-Muslim who keeps a peace treaty with Muslims or undermines his rights or burdens him beyond his capacity or takes something from him without his consent then I am his opponent or today of judgment there is no stronger statement than this folks there isn't I mean there is no way you'll find this anywhere uh, in any books and of course your Christian Prince Christian Prince I'm talking to you if you're reading you will never show such a thing like this okay and there's another teaching I'm also reported to have said he who harms a non-muslim meaning the dhimmi a non-muslim who keeps a peace treaty with muslims has harmed me and he who harms me has harmed Allah being like harm Allah here is just a metaphor, a, a metaphor that going against Allah but anyway this is a strong statement for you people to read okay if if you harm a non-muslim whom is peaceful to you is not fighting you or killing you then it's like harming the prophet and that is a big statement I'm not going to go beyond that you guys can get get google it but the, these two actually these two t statements here are way enough for me um, to end with okay I wonder if he, if you would be interested in reading what's in the Quran. Of course, I I doubt Christian Prince will show you that. Mm. Uh, later on, guys, please read this this bit here. Okay, just so you would um you will um you you get a clear idea. While I was browsing, I found this link in here. Um, let me see. type so no harm to non-muslims in Quran I want you guys to type that and click on this one here let me see if this thing can let me go through this time so computer is a little bit slow but um, I want you to read yourselves okay so Recently, some prominent talk show hosts, Sean Hannity among them, have been referring to certain verses in the Quran that appear to call for Muslims to kill non-Muslims. These verses has two have two 
often been quoted with what happens or what appears to be a willful disregard for the context. That's the thing. Christian Prince will come to you, to you with some verses out of context and will just throw them on you as if it was, I don't know what, an open permission uh, to go and kill anybody. Well, it is not. It is a historical event that was being told in in there. Okay, so um, where was I? A a careful and unbiased study of these and other verses in their proper context will reveal that the exhortation to fight idolaters and unbelievers are specific in nature and are not general injunctions for the murder of all those who refuse to accept Islam as their way of life. It is it was what was happening at the time it was it, it was time of turbulence it was time of wars between Islam just and just came and or started and the non-Muslims even the Christians and the Jews at the time were fighting Islam ruthlessly it's just like um, Judaism coming first and then it was fought by Pharaoh and his soldier and stuff like that so I hope that you you guys would at least at least try to understand what is going on okay it's it's not like a okay go and kill everyone uh, go and kill the Jews and Christians that is so not true because I'll give you an example when people were being killed uh, when people live the people we're talking about the Jews Jews when they were being killed in here in Europe by Catholics and Christians they all fled to where they all came to Muslim countries and they thrived in there okay Christianity Christians in Egypt were saved by Muslims from the Catholics so e Egyptians at the time the Copts or whatever they're not all the Copts are all the, the people who lived in Egypt not only the Christians but the Christian Egyptians were actually they were Orthodox yeah and they were being killed by the the the, the, the Catholics until the, the, the Muslims actually came to Egypt only after that the, the, and the the Orthodox the the Catholics were killing the um, the Orthodox and destroying their um, their churches until Islam came and if you guys want more of that I can uh, elaborate on it in a different video of course I will leave you guys to read a bit of this okay so according to Islamic belief the Quran was revealed to Muhammad in a process of a dialogue with the divine and some parts of the Quran refer to specific situations and exactly that he, he like a uh, chapter 9 it is a situation where people I'll take you back people in here were uh, um, breaking their uh, breaking treaties so it's that is the time where there was a war breaking treaties even between Christians and like you can check the history even between Christians they were no, oh, there's no need to roll. I showed you that already. You can go back to it from the beginning of chapter nine. You'll see that it was all about treaties being broken. So there, and some parts of the Quran refer to specific situation, while other parts offer universal spiritual principles. To understand this passage, we must take into account the historical circumstances. Like what I when I was talking to Christian Prince earlier, I was trying to get to 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 elaborate on this, but he wouldn't give anyone a chance to talk. You see, he is the master of that field. It's his arena. He, when he doesn't want you to say something, he will just cut you off. And I already showed that. Um. So 
you can read anyway you guys can read you can google this and read it yourself